In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. <coughs> Glory to Jesus Christ. Glory forever. Yesterday, celebrating the feast of the Nativity of our Lord, because this feast fell on Sunday, the liturgy of Saint Basil the Great was served. And in the second and natural prayer of that liturgy, we read, But when man disobeyed thee, the true God who had created him, and was deceived by the god of the serpent, becoming subject to death through his own transgressions. And thou, o God, in thy righteous judgment, did send him forth from paradise into this world, returning him to the earth from which he was taken. What happened? That's a powerful, powerful statement. We know in Genesis, when God created the world, and the world was complete, he looked at the world and he, he said it's good, and it pleased him, and it made him happy. And he was still lonely. So he created from the dust of the earth man, in his image and in his likeness. And when he looked upon that creation, he said it is good, And in a short period of time, he saw that his creation in his image and likeness, man, was alone. And he needed a companion. So he put his creation, man, into a deep sleep, took one of his ribs and fashioned a woman, and breathed into her that breath of life, and Woman was created, and God looked at that creation and said, as well, it is good. And when God saw Adam and Eve in paradise, he was pleased. And they were in constant communication with him. He put them in charge of the entire universe. And we know that in Genesis because he commands them to name everything in his creation. And when you gave names to someone, you ruled over them. And all that was good. But what happened? Well, long before the creation of the visible world, the invisible world existed. And there were angels pleasing to God and angels not pleasing to God. The, the angels that were not pleasing to God was led by one called Lucifer. And Lucifer was a beautiful angel. Lucifer had a good following. And he tried to overthrow God. He tried to become God because he was full of pride. That's why pride is such a deadly sin. It kills man's spirit. It killed the spirit of the invisible world and those angels that revolted and followed Lucifer against God. And there was an invisible war that took place. And they were cast from God's presence into their own domain that we call hell. That place where God is not. And forever they will be in that place. Because of pride. Because Lucifer the beautiful one thought he could, because of his beauty, and because of the following that he had, could overcome God. And the evil one was jealous of the relationship that existed between Adam and Eve and God, the Creator. And he influenced Eve to 
eat of the fruit of the one tree that God said, you shall not eat the fruit of this tree. The tree of the knowledge of good and evil. And what was the temptation? The same temptation of Lucifer. Eat the fruit. You become all knowing like God. And he succumbed. She takes them. Adam came. Eve influenced Adam also. Eat. And the first thing that they became aware of was their nakedness. And when they heard God coming to them in paradise, they ran immediately and used bushes to cover their nakedness up. And when God confronted them, he says, what are you hiding? You never had this problem before. And he said, we, because we're naked. And, he said, and who told you that you were naked? How did you know of your nakedness? Because of the temptation of the evil one, the serpent. And he cursed the serpent. And he says, forever, forever you will crawl on your belly. And, 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 and will run in, in, in the earth. And he rendered a judgment. And that's what we read in this prayer of St. Basil. I'm going to read that to you again. But when man disobeyed thee, the true God who had created him, and was deceived by the God of the serpent, becoming subject to death through his own transgressions, thou God, O God, in thy righteous judgment, did send him forth from paradise into this world, returning him to the earth from which he was taken. God rendered just judgment, not only on the serpent, but on his creation, and Adam and Eve, who he was well pleased with up to that point. They were expelled from paradise. They were expelled from the presence of God. And they were going to return to the earth from which they were taken. In other words, they were going to die. Prior to that, there was no death. But I stopped in the middle of that last sentence. And I'm going to pick up with the last half of that sentence. Yet providing for him the salvation of regeneration in thy Christ himself. That's what we're celebrating. It's a wonderful thing that we celebrate. We abandon our creator. He did not abandon us. In spite of us, in spite of our disobedience, in spite of our faithfulness, faithlessness, he comes to us as one of his own creatures. Now there's a whole, there, there, there are so many miracles that, that occur in, in, in what we're celebrating that you can't really just, we can't comprehend it all. He comes to us through a virgin. Through a 16-year-old teenager who Gabriel approaches and said, you're going to become the mother of God. And she just humbly accepts and says, well, if this is God's will, so let it be. When she accepts Gabriel's message, he leaps into her womb. The uncontainable one, the one whom the whole world cannot contain, all of a sudden is contained in the womb of the virgin. That's astounding. It's beyond comprehension. And he's there for nine months. And even though she conceived, she's still a virgin. Because you see, in eternity, he was with the father without a mother. But when he accepts humanity, he becomes human without a father. 
because Mary is conceived by the grace of the Holy Spirit. Because of her, of her willingness to obey, of her willingness to humble herself and follow God's will. Then she gives birth to him. We call that the incarnation. He clothes himself with flesh. For the sake of flesh. And she gives birth. And she still remains a virgin. Miracle upon miracle upon miracle upon miracle. He comes in all humility. And he will come again. But when he comes again, he will come as the one who is victorious. He will come as the one who conquered sin and annihilated death and destroyed the evil one and his domain and his workings. That's what we celebrate. And if we could only simply put aside all of the other things that draw us off in some tangent area, and just dwell on what the Lord has done for us, we won't need any presents, dear, dear beloved, because there's no greater gift than eternal life. And there's no greater gift than being in the presence of God 